How are we all? Hope you're all doing well, picking some locks and keeping it bloody legal. And welcome to the Sunday Beginner Series, where each and every Sunday I cover topics to help beginners build a great little foundation into this awesome, awesome sport known as lock sport, which is lock picking. Now, my good friend Alex sent me, I'm just trying to get a bit more tape off that one, some of this stainless steel strips here that are very, very thin. Uh, they are, I'll grab the calipers down here, extremely thin. And I actually found some today. Zero that out. Let's go in thousandths of an inch. Is measuring point zero zero eight thousandths of an inch, so extremely thin. Um, which works out. Let's go. In. That's not five mil. Zero point two five millimeters, so very, very thin. Um, and I did find these today. I was looking when I was in Bunnings. I had to go buy a new welding helmet because um, I went to do some welding last night. I grabbed my welding helmet, the auto one, off the side. Go to use it, and the uh, ratchet for the headband to hold it on had broke and wouldn't work at all it was snapped so i cracked the shits threw me welding helmet down on the ground and smashed all the screen on it um so then i had to go to bunnings today and buy a new one which they aren't cheap but anyway um and saw these in there if you look at the end here got a bit of a notch to it these are actually from stainless steel cable ties that i saw in there you could pick up a pack for couple of dollars very very cheap and they're very very thin as well as you saw and i thought hmm i wonder if i could make a working decoder kind of like the sparrows ultra decoder because that is very very thin as well about the same thickness and i'll just put my calipers away what i do that for i'm an idiot bloody hell Blah. These are zero point six nineteen millimeters, which works out to seven five about seven zero zero seven. 0 0.007 of an inch so maybe a little bit thinner uh, than those cable tie ones but you know still the right thickness for it so I thought hmm let's do a beginner series if you didn't want to go and buy one of these or you know you break one because they are very very thin steel and quite easy to damage you wanted to make some workhorse ones, you know, ones that you can just use if you break it, you can get rid of it, it's not going to cost you a fortune. And this is a great steel to actually make one from. So let's head out into the workshop and I'll show you how to make a workhorse. It's not going to be pretty, you know, a nice fancy one you can put on display and all that. It's just going to be a workhorse, something that you'll use, it'll work, and if it breaks, it doesn't cost you much, you can get rid of it and do another one so uh let's head out to the workshop and do it okay so as we were talking inside i'm going to show you how to turn some of this very very thin stainless steel these are from and by the looks of it and what i was looking at when i was in bunnings today uh picking up a new welding helmet because my old one broke and when i was in there yesterday i bought this bad boy my new bench grinder to make some pick handles with um, these are almost like the stainless steel zip ties that you can buy. Very, very thin. And normally I always hand file, but to try and make this, because I've got to take off a fair bit of metal, 
I'm going to use the bench grinder. But a couple little tips. If you overheat your metal, you're going to screw it. Um, that's why I always have a tendency to stay away from bench grinders. Uh, I've still got my old bad boy here. Still runs like new, but this has a brand new flat wheel on it. So I thought it'd be great and to have a play with it. Um, so if you use super light pressure and barely take any material off and quench extremely often, uh, every I literally just if I can't put my hand on here straight after I've taken it across the bench grinder, to me I've gone a bit too high if it feels even the slightest bit warm. I'm just going to keep quenching, literally little zip, quench, zip, quench, and go through and thin this right down. So pretty much what I'm going to try and get down to I am just going to, because it has alright tip to it, it is a little bit bent, but I'm going to make a bypass decoder. So I want it nice and thin, so I'm going to take it down the bouts there and I'm going to come up. So I'm just going to take off just enough to have a bit of a decoder. Could probably even come up a bit further if you want. So that's a rough outline, probably taking too much across there. So pretty much a nice little decoder knife, which I can do pretty much by eye. So let's get the bench grinder going. I've got my quenching water right there. And let's get into filing this down and then I'll show you how to uh, finish it all up and a couple of handle ideas. Okay, so I've ground it down. I didn't heat the metal up at all the whole time I was using the bench grinder. I was very, very careful. And I just used the hand file just to thin it down. It was getting a bit too thin for the uh, bench grinder. So I've got my Sparrows Ultra Decoder here. And as you can see, this one is a wee bit thinner in the profile. So... I'm quite happy with that. It's going to work. And just to see if I can fill any gates, let me head over or we'll head over to me uh, cupboard over there where I'll put all the lock picking stuff and we'll see if we can fill any gates using this. Head that way. it is on that lock so that works quite well put the code back in <laughs> works quite well now head back all the way over here You can see I've been busy working on the wife's car trying to get those rotors off. But we need a specialised tool because it's a four-wheel drive. 
So for our handle we have a couple of options. We can go really fancy, put a nice wooden handle on here, you know, it would look very nice. Um, or we can do a very cheap yet effective handle, uh, which a lot of people don't really cover. You know, we're all about beautiful handles, but if you want a workhorse, something, these uh, stainless steel cable ties that you can buy that this is very very similar to you can buy a pack for about two dollars whereas the Dakotas you know are a bit more expensive I think they're about ten or eleven bucks something like that um, compared to two dollars to make quite a few a very cheap and effective method of making a work call so if you're not if you don't worry about breaking anything it involves using two things. Heat shrink tubing and wiper inserts. Now this is a thin one. I'll show you this. Rather than going into fancy handles, we'll do that later on with picks. But the uh, you want to add a little bit of rigid support to a thin pick we're going to make a couple of or get a couple of wiper inserts bent to the right length this is a very very easy method because wiper inserts you can pick up for nothing So on a couple, see how many I can get. Four, oh, that should do. So what we do is you break off some wiper inserts to the length of your handle that you want. Let me move this down. I've got pointing up. That's better. So you break them off to the length that you want. I probably want a little bit too much. I oh know that'll work. To the length of the pick you want, it adds just a little bit more rigidness. Then you want to grab some heat shrinking that is the right size. Got a nice selection of colours here. We have let's go red. Not too big. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some heat shrink over there. Like that. Slide these two in. The other side. Now this is a very, very cheap and easy way to add a bit more support. And... The person that told me about this method, and I quite like it, and I'm going to pass it on, was to Penny. So, sorry, mate. <laughs> but he said he does this with some of his workhorses, rather than the ones, you know, that are there to look very, very pretty for your workhorse, ones that you, know, you don't mind if they get damaged. Use a bit of heat shrink. And I don't want a hot flame, so I'm not going to use me propane ethyl mix big ass torch that I've just bought I'm going to use a little butane just going to heat that shrink tubing up who doesn't love playing with fire that hasn't heated that up at all let's grab, let's grab red and black just a Get up, uh, pull, spring it. Go, the mighty bombers. Just overlap that just a little bit. And again, just going to heat this up. And of course, you can make this a lot nicer. I'm just doing a quick one here. But you gone from a very very thin material to a substantial pick handle you know very cheap if your pick breaks you can just cut off your shrink tubing 
but for a workhorse, it's actually very, very comfortable. It adds a bit more rigidness to your picks. Of course, you wouldn't leave it laying like that. You'd grind that bottom bit off, which we will do now just to show you. Nice, quick and easy. The reason why I switch grinders is because I was trying to get that curve. But, there we go. Quick and easy little knife. I'll probably clean that up a little bit more. But, a great little way to make some very cheap and quite nice handles. They're very, very comfortable to use. And, if I was to polish this up a bit more, I went with the 600. Let's grab a quick bit of 1200. And just give that a bit of a I mean, it did get a little bit dinted in the vise. But this steel was a great thickness for making decoders. If I was to put it in the vise again I'd probably use wood. I would use wood either side. Um, so as to not damage the metal like I did but she's not pretty but for a little Dakota if you haven't got one pop down to your hardware store pick up some of those stainless steel zip ties and you are good to go and grind them down, file it a little bit. You know, some wiper inserts, we all have them laying around. Some shrink tubing. And uh, got a pretty good little workhorse. This is going to be going in one of my kits. Not sure which one, but I'm going to be using that. So there we go. How to make a decoder. Very, very easy. Nice little cheap way of making handles. It doesn't look as pretty as the Sparrows Ultra Decoder, but nice thin one, especially you know for those locks with very small gates. Nice fine tip to go find in them. A little bit longer, great if you've got a longer hand, big hand like me, not a longer one. But there we go, that's this Sunday beginner series. Let's head back inside and uh, wrap this up. But before I head in, I've got to clean all this up, so... See so you in there. Okay, so we are back. And this is the workhorse. It's a little bit scuffed up. I did, as I said outside, I did get a little bit of damage from being in the vise. Next time I'll use a piece of wood. But, as you can see, we get a nice little, come on camera, focus, workhorse. So a little bit longer, great for my giant sized hands which I've got to go and clean before I have some dinner uh, but you know nice little cheap and easy handle some shrink wrapping and a couple of wiper inserts add a little bit more rigidness to the pick handle uh, if you have the Sparrow Slither picks this is a great little way to add a little bit of stiffness to them as well because they're 12 thousandths of an inch but Nice little working horse, you know, if it breaks, it breaks. All I've got is a little bit of time put into it, not much at all. I could probably actually clamp a couple of these together and make a few at the same time rather than just the one. That way you save a little bit of time, you know, make up some handles and you are good to go for decoding some combination locks. So there we go. A little bit different, as I said, to the Sparrows Ultra Decoder. My one's pretty bent up. Um, you know, a little bit thinner, but the tips is what really matters. And the thickness, they're nice and thin and will fit down into 
the combination wheels in between them to find those gates. The other thing I should say is the feedback through these handles because it's pretty much just steel on steel with a little bit of shrink wrap to hold it all into place. Feedback is absolutely fantastic. So not a big chunk of wood or anything sitting in your way. You'll feel and feedback metal on metal pretty much. You can feel absolutely everything. So there you go. It's not the prettiest, it's not the best, but it is a workhorse and for a beginner, you know, a nice little easy build for you. So that is this Sunday's beginner series. I hope you've all enjoyed it. Uh, giving you a few ideas on workhorses, you know, how to make some and a couple of little tips when it comes to grinding. So as always, always follow the code to keep Locksport legal, you know, don't go doing anything stupid. Don't forget, down the bottom here is that subscribe button, right next to it is that bell icon, you got to hit both of them, the way YouTube runs everything now, that way you can stay up to date, as soon as I upload a video, you'll be one of the first to know, you know, I try to load two to three to four videos per week, depending on work and everything else that I've got going on. Don't forget to come and join us on Discord, Extraordinary League of Pickers, link's in the description, so go into that description, scroll down a little bit, there's a link, click on that and come and join us, you will not be disappointed. Don't forget, you can also find Dark Arts Lockpick on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where I'll put up post photos of what's going on in the background, all the fun stuff that happens around here, pretty much. If you're looking for great equipment at very competitive and affordable prices, don't forget to check out locksmithstoolbox.com. They're an awesome Australian company, and as you know, that's where I get 99% of my lockpicking equipment from. If you want to get in contact me, you can contact me through any social media, Discord, or send us an email at darkartslockpicking at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you. If you like what you see, please give a thumbs up. Really do appreciate it. Hope this helps you out on, you know, making some workhorses. We don't like breaking picks. We cry when a pick breaks. But if you can make some cheap and easy workhorses, you know, it saves you a bit of money in the long run. Um, because, as we you know, picks aren't cheap. We all shed a tear when someone breaks one. So... Yeah, if you like what you see, please give a thumbs up. Really do appreciate it. And until next time, cheers, guys. See you Monday. Do some picking. Don't forget Wednesday, review. And it will be a giveaway review as well, which is the Dino Euro pick gun. See? Picks down. So be reviewing that and doing the giveaway for that. So stay tuned for that. And have a good one. Happy picking, everyone. Love lock sporting.